everybody. Welcome to the Good News Girl podcast. I believe this is episode number 14. Thank you all for listening. I'm really, truly, truly honored at everybody who takes the moment to listen here. You're why I do it. And I just wanted to take a moment to thank you. And I'm really excited. If you're not subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. And um, yeah, I look forward to uh, releasing this word today. And it's called Go Where You Grow. I just wanted to bring a little bit um, into this podcast on, on some of my process and how I hear God and some of the ways he speaks to me. Uh, everybody's a little different in those areas, but um, I actually was listening to a song from the late 60s. Uh, you may know it. Love grows where my rosemary goes and nobody knows like me. And I, I kept playing the song over and over and over. And while there's no place, there's nothing that can replace worship music, nothing. And uh, I would never propose that. But there, you know, God is the creator of everything. And when he gives somebody a talent, when somebody has a talent, it is from the Lord. He puts that inside of them. And so there's plenty of secular music and things and messages out there that I really can draw and pull and hear the Lord on. And in particular, this song, I just kept seeing myself dancing to it. Uh, And so I got up and it was almost this um, act of obedience. I got up and I started to dance and I just felt like the Lord started speaking to me and he gave me this podcast. And so I wanted to just kind of bring you into the background of where I get some of these words. And he started to just speak to me, showed me scriptures and he started saying, you know, go where you grow. And the reason I thought that is because I was watching the video and I thought, there was a bunch of go-go dancers and people dancing in the 60s and you know they looked really fabulous fabulous clothes and it was just a really cool video and I said it's really kind of like a sunburn meeting (laughs) sunburn is the ministry that I run with Uh, check them out sunburn encounters sunburn s-o-n-b-u-r-n sunburn encounters encountering the father through the face of the sun it's on fire ministry that I run with And I was sort of chuckling and joking, and I said, this looks like a sunburn meeting, all these people just wild and free and having a great time dancing and freedom. And, you know, I started to process that thought that I had, this looks like a sunburn meeting. I thought, you know, there's people in the body of Christ who might look at this and think um, that it's offensive. You know, they may look at that and say that 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 was offensive to them because they, they like a reverence, more of a reverence stance and uh, way that they position themselves. And so I thought, well, that, you know, that's okay too. There, there's people in the body of Christ who, um, who don't use music to worship and they worship the Lord with their voices and with their uh, heart postures and the way that they carry things out. And there's people in the body of Christ who, who come into a holiness, sort of a consecrated, just ceremonial um, kind of worship. And there's different things. So I started thinking about Romans 12 where it says uh, different parts of the body and um, and I'll, I'll pick it up for you here at uh, Romans 12, verse 4. It just says, each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function. And what they're talking about is, you know, the big toe isn't the same as the eyeball, okay? And um, I sometimes see in the body of Christ, people say, you know, someone's called to be a big toe, and they're looking at the eyeball and just calling it, you know, you're not doing the right things. You're supposed to look like a big toe. And the, and the eyeball is actually just doing what it's supposed to be doing, you know. Um, there's a purpose for all of the things. If I'm an arm, I certainly can't be a knee. And if I'm a knee, I certainly shouldn't be acting like, you know, um, the low back. And so um, <laughs> it's really stretching here. But Yeah, I mean, we aren't all called to the same things. And so I think it's really okay to look different and to function different and to worship different. And we all bring really powerful things to the body. And, um, and the goal is to, is bringing the kingdom from heaven to earth and to getting souls saved until Jesus returns. That's the goal. That's the work that we're doing is advancing the kingdom. Okay, continuing on verse five. Romans 12 verse 5. So in Christ, we who are many form one body and each member belongs to all the others. We have different gifts according to the grace given us. And it talks about if a man's gift is prophesying, let him 
Use it in proportion to his faith. If it's serving, let him serve. If it's teaching, let him teach. If it's encouraging, let him encourage. If it's contributing to the needs of others, let him give generously. If it's leadership, let him govern diligently. If it's showing mercy, let him do it cheerfully. So we do all look a little bit different, but I was thinking, you know, it's not necessarily wrong. If you're growing in a place, that's really, you know, an excellent place to be. Um, and and I want to talk a little bit about that here before I get into these next scriptures. But uh, growing is painful sometimes. I'm going to read the definition of grow. It is undergo natural development by increasing in size and changing physically, progressing to maturity, becoming larger or greater over a period of time, an increase. You know, you've heard the term grow, growing pains. And, um, you know, sometimes it's a little bit uncomfortable when you're growing. But, you know, as you mature and, and grow in things, um, I, I really liken it to, I think about pruning. And, um, you know, John 15 is one of the best. It's one of my favorite, probably my personal most read chapters in the Bible. And um, it's talking about pruning in there. And pruning is painful, you know, and growth is hard. When you're operating in growth in your own capacity, sometimes, you know, with our own responsibilities and in our own strength, sometimes we just grow into this, you know, wild weed. And it's just growing wildly. It's not cultivated. But cultivation really requires redirection, growth, pruning, and care. And I was thinking about this. It's maturity because you, you would never prune a brand new shoot that's coming up. You would water it and um, feed it and nurture it and allow it space and room to grow. Um, but even that little shoot, it comes out of a seed. When a seed has to break through, it's buried underground under dirt and has to come up through. That's painful. It's dark. It's scary. This is all you know a process of growth. Um, when we really submit ourselves into the Holy Spirit and allow him to shape us, and firm us up, um, prune us, that's when we start to get the fruit. That's the fruit that we're looking for, okay? And um, we're really looking for branches that flourish, and we really want to take deep root. So we want that, that, um, that feeding and um, watering uh, process to be really firm so that we have good, deep roots. Um, Yeah, so I was just thinking about growing, you know, it's for the mature. So it's maturing and, um, and yeah. So I want to talk about Matthew 13 and the parables um, here. There are another gospels, but I'm just in Matthew. So starting at, um, he starts to talk and I, I just want to read a little bit of this. A farmer went out to sow his seed and as he was scattering the seed, some fell among the path and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell in the rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched and they withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among the thorns, which grew up and choked the plants. Still, other seed fell on good soil where it produced a crop, a hundred, sixty, or thirty times what was sown. He who has ears, let him hear. So um, this is just, you know... uh, thinking it is important where we are. It's important that we're growing in good soil. It's important that we're rooted and planted in the right places. Um, and uh, and I, I just think it's according to our call. I really do. Um, one of my favorite verses, I just would be remiss if I didn't mention it, is uh, 1311. The knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of heaven have been given to you, but not to them. Whoever has will be given more, and he will have an abundance. Whoever does not have, even what he has will be taken from him. This is why I speak to them in parables. And he goes on and talks. Um, so then come down to verse 18, Matthew thirteen eighteen. Listen to what the parable of the sower means. When anyone hears the message about the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what was sown in his heart. This is the seed sown along the path. The one who received the seed that fell on rocky places is the man who hears the word and at once receives it with joy. But since he has no root, he lasts only a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, he quickly falls away. The one who received the seed and fell among the thorns is the man who hears the word, but the worries of his life and deceitfulness of wealth choke it, making it unfruitful. But 
The one who received the seed that fell on good soil is the man who hears the word and understands it. He produces a crop, yielding 160 or 30 times what was sown. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so it, it really is important where we land, and um, um, it's important to cultivate that. And I really think it's go where you grow. I think it's important to find that um, this is really, you know, description of of um, things that happen to people in the world and just the way the enemy works and different things. But really, I'm using it in the lens. Look at this in the lens of finding the right soil, and that's where you plant. Um, so, okay, staying in Matthew 13, I want to come down to the parable of the weeds. Jesus told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while everyone was sleeping, his enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and went away. When the wheat sprouted and formed heads, the weeds also appeared. The owner's servants came to him and said, Sir, don't you sow good seed in your field? Where then did the weeds come from? An enemy did this, he replied. The servants asked him, Do you want us to go and pull them up? No, he answered, because while you are pulling up the weeds, you may root up the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. At that time, I will tell the harvesters, first collect the weeds and tie them in bundles to be burned. Then gather the wheat and bring it into my barn. And then coming down to verse 36, he says, The parable of the weeds explained, The one who sowed the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world, and the good seed stands for the sons of the kingdom. The weeds are the sons of the evil one, and the enemy who sows them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the harvesters are the angels. As the weeds are pulled up and burned in the fire, so it will be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send out his angels, and they will weed out of his kingdom everything that causes sin and all who do evil. They will throw them into the fiery furnace, where they will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. He who has ears, let him hear. Yeah, so even when we're in the right soil and in the right place, there are going to be weeds that come up amongst us. And instead of focusing and, and staring and looking at these weeds and saying, you know, these weeds are all around, the Lord has his eye on those weeds. He knows what the weed is and what the wheat is. He knows what good is and what isn't good. You know, he knows truth. He knows righteousness. And, and um, we just, our job is to continue to grow. It's to be in the right soil, to be in the right place and continue to grow. Because when the time comes, we will be sifted from the, those that are weeds. And um, I just feel like right now in this, in the body of Christ, we're supposed to be working together, not um, worrying if somebody has a weed next to them or, um, you know, this is, this is the Lord. He speaks in parables and, uh, so, um, how do we know that we're in the right place? I mean, people, a lot of talk is out there about false teachings and, um, all these, you know, false prophets and false, false teachers and, um, deception and being cautious of where we are. Um, <clears throat> I just want to read a couple of things. So I started to think what defines salvation? Um, one of, one of the scriptures in, in Ephesians 2 uh, verse 8 says, It is by grace that you have been saved, through faith. And this, not from yourselves, is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. So we cannot boast anyway. So the first minute that you think you have it all right, and you know the right thing, I mean, there is no perfect ministry, there is no perfect church. Um, we, working together as the body of Christ, Christ is the perfect one. Um, so we we just need to be cautious that we don't get, we have to remain teachable, keep our hearts open. Um, and that parable, you know, and Matthew really, really kind of speaks to that. The, um, the one that grew up, you know, was able to be teachable and keep their heart open. And, um, and I was just thinking about that. We, we just have to remain um, in that, that mindset and, and keep, keep focused on that. Look at John 5, 24. It says, I tell you the truth, whoever has my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life and will not be condemned. He has crossed over from death to life. Whoever believes in the Lord um, has eternal life. That's what it says right there. And Romans 10, 9 says, just turning there one second. I want to read it right. 
it says that if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. So there, there it is. Um, I think sometimes in the body we're spending too much time pointing fingers at how people are doing things and the way that they're doing it and, and what they're doing correctly, except that you're missing the plank in your own eye. You know, the Lord says that. Don't point out um, a splinter in somebody else's eye when you're missing the plank in your own eye. And um, so we just need to be cautious. If people are exalting Jesus, um, it, it talks in the Bible uh, a great deal about, um, I just, you know, I, I would be, re- you, you can't just go anywhere is what I'm trying to say. Go where you grow, but also where the truth is. And so I guess that's what I'm getting at with, with some of these scriptures. Looking at 2 Timothy 3, 5, it says that, um, in the end times, having a form of godliness, but denying its power. Um, it ta- it's talking about, you know, in godliness in the last days, that there will be a form of godliness. So some places demonstrate some truths, you know, but they're denying that dunamis. If you look that word up, power, in your inner linear, dunamis, that's the mighty miracle works of God. Um, and so just as long as you're in truth and you're reading these scriptures and you know what's right, um, go where you grow. Um, I want to skip, I want to take a look at Hebrews 13, 8. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Okay, so um, I would just, you know, be cautious to go places where people say that, you know, the Lord isn't working miracles and isn't working in power and doesn't believe in the gifts. I mean, get in your Bible and understand your Bible and know the truth of where the Lord is, um, because he is the same yesterday, today and forever. And he is the one who is and was and is to come, was and is and is to come. Um, Revelation 1, 8. He is omnipotent. He is hallelujah. The Lord God omnipotent reigns. Revelation 19, 6. Um, he is all powerful almighty dunamis he's got the power he was the same yesterday as he is today and he will be forever the one who was and is and is to come and we just have to you know know that when we're when we're looking at places but go where you grow and and so if um you know a a freedom um dance party place isn't for you uh you know some people do praise god in those ways and it might just look a different than what you're used to uh, but be, keep your heart right and um, before the body. Don't be one of those weeds growing up uh, that's going to get filtered out because you're causing strife and division um, by pointing fingers at a big toe for not functioning like an elbow when it was never meant to be that way in the first place. And love your brothers and sisters. Walk humbly. Remain humble. Um, and teachable and understanding uh, because that's what the word says that we will have understanding so I just want to pray I want to say go where you grow and be rooted and grounded and let your roots get in deep 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 roots we want the deepest roots and Lord I just bless your growth we bless the pruning process the painful process of growing And, uh, yeah, get connected, stay connected with people, do community right, um, understand relationships, don't position yourself in offense, but, um, be forgiving, be quick to forgive, um, and, and not be afraid of somebody who is a little bit different from you. And when people hurt you or let you down, don't be quick to tear them down to make, make it look better, um. And let's move this kingdom forward. Let's get the church working as the body that it's supposed to. Uh, You know, instead of a bunch of big toes running together and a bunch of uh, pinky fingers running together, let's work the way that we're supposed to in our differences and our different callings and um, move the body of Christ forward. In Jesus' name, amen.